World War II, the greatest war in history. That is, if one could call a war great. The war was fought between the Axis powers, Italy, Germany, and Japan, and the Allies, the United States, Russia, and Great Britain. By the end of the war, approximately 25 million soldiers lay dead. Along with them, there were 30 million civilian casualties, including 6 million Jews who had suffered at the hands of the Nazis. Adolf Hitler was the dictator of Germany and the primary leader of the Axis powers. Hitler rose to power in 1933, shortly after World War I. His rise to power had been a slow one. At first, he had only accumulated a couple hundred party members, but soon that number would grow until he was elected the leader of Germany. Hitler's dictatorship quickly became one of fear and destruction. In his book, Mein Kampf, or My Struggle, written in 1924, Hitler laid out his plans as a leader. He focused heavily on the superiority of the Aryan race, which meant the destruction of the inferiors, Jews, Gypsies, homosexuals, Slavs, anyone he did not consider a pure German. This idea of destruction for inferior races included not only those people's lives, but also their possessions, furniture, money, common household items, and most of all, art. Hitler loved art, for he himself was a failed artist. Hitler had twice applied to the Academy of Fine Arts Vienna, but was rejected because his art was judged unsatisfactory. It was said his drawings showed a lack of talent for artistic painting, notably a lack for appreciation of the human form. Because of this failure, Hitler used art as propaganda to push his idea of a pure Germany. He opened up a degenerate art exhibit where he showed what kind of people were ruining his nation. This exhibit was made of mostly paintings and sculptured by Impressionists, awful individuals who were either of an inferior race or mentally ill. Hitler also opened a German art exhibit, one filled with works that he himself had handpicked. The German art exhibit was proof of German superiority and was filled with erotic classical pieces. Hitler also had plans to create the greatest museum in history, the Führer Museum in his hometown of Linz, a grand exhibit filled with the best works of art from all over the world. Of course, for this to be the case, Hitler had to obtain national treasures and family heirlooms. And so he did. George Stout, an art conservation expert. James Rohrmer, a curator of the Met. Robert Posey, an architect. Walker Hancock, an optimistic renowned sculptor. And Rose Valland, a Frenchwoman who worked as an unpaid volunteer at the Jus de Palme. These were the amazing men and women who saved and repatriated hundreds of works of art during World War II. They are known as the Monuments Men. The giant task of the Monuments Men was to keep European architecture and culture safe as the war tore through the continent, carrying death and destruction with it. However, as the war went on, the Monuments Men realized that due to Hitler's art obsession, the Nazis were stealing works of art and hiding them all over the European countryside, mainly in mines. The Monuments Men found thousands of paintings hidden deep underground, including works done by famous artists and national treasures. In their hunt for art, the Monuments Men also managed to find a large hoard of Nazi gold. The Monuments Men worked long after the war looking for, repairing, and repatriating artwork. They were the true heroes to save culture and art. In 1945, the Monuments seized a painting called Two Riders on a Beach by Max Lieberman, from a German art dealer by the name of Hindelbrand Gerlitt, but it was returned to him a couple years later due to missing documentation and would remain in the Gerlitt family for another 60 years. Max Lieberman was a German-Jewish Impressionist artist born in 1847. Lieberman was highly influenced by French Impressionist painters. His paintings were usually very light in color and he tended to put more focus on this rather than the actual subject. In 1901, while he was on vacation on the North Sea, Lieberman painted various scenes of horses, mules, and people on beaches. One of those was titled simply, Two Riders on a Beach. Two Riders on a Beach is oil on canvas that shows two riders in casual riding attire crossing the beach of a seaside resort. The horse in the foreground trots on the sand while the other appears unsettled. 
the hoofs submerged in water. The scene is captured at the moment when the rider in the front turns toward his companion, whose horse prances skittishly, avoiding the waves. The composition derives its dynamic from the subtle differences in the movement of the horses and their riders, as well as from the powerful depiction of the animals against the waves and the gray sky. David Friedman, a successful Jewish agricultural tycoon from Germany, had a very distinguished art collection. His Breslau mansion had 54 pieces of museum-quality artwork. Art lined every wall of the estate. It was a place of beauty and wonder for family, friends, and famous associates who visited. This beauty was short-lived, however, when in November of 1940, every piece of artwork was removed from the wall and ended up in the hands of the Nazis. This happened the night after Kristallnacht. David Torn, nephew of Friedman, remembers his favorite painting, a Max Lieberman piece, being ripped off the walls. This painting was, of course, two riders on a beach. The painting was then sold to a man named Cornelius Muller Hofstede, who in turn gave it to Dr. Hildebrand Gerlitt, only two years after it had been stolen. It was then that the Monuments men confiscated the piece, only for it to be returned to Gerlitt in 1950. The painting remained in the Gerlitt family until 2015, when Cornelius Gerlitt, the son of Dr. Gerlitt, passed away. Finally, the art was returned to the Friedman family, at least what was left. The painting went to David Torin, Friedman's nephew, who had escaped through the kinder transport. Torin was living in New York City when the painting was finally returned. Hildebrand Gerlitt was a Nazi art dealer during World War II who traded degenerate art. But who exactly was Dr. Gerlitt? Gerlitt was born into an artistic family in Dresden in 1895. Everyone in his family worked in the arts, including his sister Cornelia, who was an expressionist painter. Gerlitt and his sister were very close, so much so that one of her most famous paintings is a portrait of her brother. Because of this connection the two had, Gerlitt became very fond of expressionist and modern art, especially after his sister committed suicide in 1919. Gerlitt was the first director of the Koning Albert Museum in Zwickau in 1925, until he resigned in 1930 because of hostility from the locals due to the contemporary art he was choosing to display. Hildebrand then became the curator and managing director of the Kunstverein, or Art Association, until he and the board members were forced to resign by the Nazis in 1933. Being a quarter Jewish, Gerlitt began to panic. He joined the Nazi party where he could be protected and still work with the art he loved. He was appointed by Hitler as one of four art dealers to work for the Führer Museum. Gerlitt and the other dealers looked over thousands of confiscated works, which they could choose to buy, sell, display, or destroy. While many people would pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for a certain painting, Gerlitt would buy it for one dollar or even less. This is how he acquired a personal collection of up to 1,500 pieces. Upon capture, Gerlitt told United States authorities that in the firebombing of Dresden, his collection and his documentation of art transactions had all been destroyed in his home. 115 pieces taken from him by American and German authorities were returned to him after he had convinced them that he had acquired them all legally. Assessed as a victim of Nazi persecution due to his Jewish heritage, Gerlitt was released and continued trading in art until his death in a car crash in 1956. His presumably destroyed art would remain missing for another 60 years. In 2010, German officials stopped the son of Hildebrand Gerlitt, Cornelius Gerlitt, while he was attempting to enter Germany with $13,000 in cash. He exclaimed that he had gotten the money selling artwork in Switzerland. While he was allowed to go on his way, the recluse had raised suspicions. How could he possibly survive without a job, a pension, or any insurance? Further investigation ended in a warrant to search Gerlitz's apartment in Munich. Upon searching his home, the authorities found over 1,200 works of art crammed into Gerlitz's apartment. The collection, composed of many famous artists, was expected to be worth up to $1 billion. Research showed that 380 of the works had been taken for the Nazis during World War II and declared degenerate art, one of these being Max Lieberman's Two Riders on a Beach. Gerlitt died in 2014. In his will, he gives a museum in Bern, Switzerland, all of his art. 
The will also stipulated that the museum would be required to research the provenance of the paintings and make restitution as appropriate. Despite many claims to the various artworks, only two pieces have been restituted from the Gurlitt Art Trove. Woman with a Fan by Henry Matisse and Two Riders on a Beach by Max Lieberman. The German government was very hesitant about dealing with the art and moved the process as slowly as possible. Because of this, David Torin, nephew of the original owner of Two Riders, David Friedman, decided to sue the German government for a chance at justice. David Torrance said he had decided to build a lawsuit because two riders belonged to his family and the unconsciousable delay tactics of the German government should not be tolerated. Torrance and his lawyers built a strong case against the German government. Their main argument was that the German government had kept the discoveries of the artwork hidden for two years and intended to keep custody of the art that had been stolen by the Nazis. Torn presented irrefutable evidence that the art had been stolen and demanded Germany return it immediately. Germany refused. The irrefutable evidence Torn showed the court were multiple letters in German, one of them signed, with kind regards and hail Hitler. This letter was written to Dr. Gerlitt, exclaiming that the writer had acquired two paintings, including two writers at sea, and was willing to sell them to Gerlitt. This proof that the Max Lieberman painting, along with others in David Friedman's collection, had been obtained illegally helped David Torin win his case and ensure justice. David Torin may have won a huge victory against hatred and discrimination, but he can no longer see that painting he fell in love with all those years ago. Torin is now 90 years old and blind. He says winning the lawsuit was all about principle. Torn has decided to sell his Max Lieberman at Sotheby's Auction House in London. For himself, he has had a 3D replication made of two riders, so he can feel the bright colors and strokes of the brush. At Sotheby's, two riders on a beach recently sold for almost £2 million to a private art collector. And now, this beautiful piece of artwork has finally been put to rest after a long 76-year journey. The story of two writers on a beach is one of sorrow and intrigue. This lovely painting proves that art can matter for many reasons. Max Lieberman may not be the most well-known artist, and two writers is no Mona Lisa or Ghent altarpiece. But to David Torn, it is much more important. The painting symbolizes his family, whom he lost to the Holocaust, which is why it was important for him to get justice. Two Riders on a Beach represents justice served for those who lost everything to Hitler and the Nazis. Two Riders, though no longer with Torin, is where it finally belongs. No longer will it be in the hands of men who benefited from the death of six million Jews. The story of Two Riders is a message of equality, unity, and the fact that no matter what may happen, justice will always prevail. <laughs>